Why would Scar let Simba run off when he could have stopped him on his own? Today, I'm going to do my best to understand this decision by Scar that seems to have been one fatal mistake that led to his undoing. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. Scar was ready to cause the coup of the century through the destruction of his family to take control of the Pride Lands. Dethroning his brother Mufasa and removing his brother's heir was what he needed to accomplish to take the throne, and he had prepared himself to seize this achievement. His goal was clear. He would rise as king by causing their deaths. We're gonna kill him. And Simba too. During Mufasa's reign, Scar had desired to end Simba's life for some time, but he knew and came to learn he and none of his minions would ever be able to defeat Simba's father in a direct fight. Is that a challenge? I wouldn't dream of challenging you. Before the hyenas attacked Simba in the gorge, there had at least been one other plot to bring about the death of the heir to Mufasa in the elephant graveyard, but that had been halted by the king's intervention. What Scar came to realize was that if he hoped to take the throne, he would need to be a bit more ingenious. You could say there needed to be a bit more creativity into how Scar ended Mufasa's lineage. Well, as far as brains go, I got the lion's share, but when it comes to brute strength, I'm afraid I'm at the shallow end of the gene pool. In the end, what Scar had developed was a plot that pitted Mufasa's commitment to his son against the danger of a stampede. By ordering a stampede to occur in the gorge where Simba was placed, Scar was able to force Mufasa down there to risk his life for Simba, and due to the chaos that ensued, Scar finally was able to kill his brother. Long live the king. With Mufasa's life ended, there seemed to be no individual who could have threatened Scar and defended Simba as his father once had. Therefore, when Simba was all alone, Scar could have ended Simba himself. Instead, though, he did something else. In place of ending Simba's life, Scar convinced Simba to flee from the Pride Lands so that his hyenas could be sent after him. The hyenas chased the cub down, but once Simba fell into a thorn patch, the hyenas let him escape, believing he could not survive while being away from his home. He's as good as dead out there anyway. And if he comes back, we'll kill him. The hyenas then told Scar that Simba was dead, and he foolishly believed the three hyenas had disposed of the one lion who could oppose his rule. It could appear that Scar fabricated a situation where he was in full control over his destiny and then messed it up. The way to rid himself of Simba could have been through him taking action against his defenseless and emotionally charged nephew, but he just let him slip away. At first, I just didn't understand what could have possibly been holding him back. Scar wanted Simba dead, and he had already taken one life that day. What stopped him from finishing what he had started? Maybe his ego was just too inflated. As the mastermind behind his plots, he often was the one leading, instructing, and manipulating rather than the one who took action. Scar acted as the commander of the hyenas when they attacked Simba in the graveyard, began the stampede, and inevitably went after Simba, even though these were the same animals who had failed him before. Maybe it was possible that he just saw the work that the hyenas partook in as a task that was beneath him, especially after his years of planning had finally culminated in the death of his greatest adversary. Part of him did seem to always feel superior to the hyenas he surrounded himself with, even before Mufasa's last moment in the gorge. Oh, I like that. He's not king, but he's still so proper. Maybe he had already convinced himself that his time as ruler had already began, so others needed to handle the work that was meant for soldiers, not leaders. We know he desired Simba's life to be ended and that he accepted murder as a way to accomplish his goals, but maybe another explanation for why he stopped himself was he didn't want to get his paws dirty with the death of a cub. Mufasa's death was different than what Simba's would have been. Defeating the lion who had wronged him for his entire life maybe felt less immoral compared to ending the life of a young lion who only bothered him on occasion and had a claim to the throne. There was much more of a history of misdeeds, wrongdoings, conflict, and anger between Mufasa and Scar. Oh no, Mufasa. 
Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me. So when Scar confronted Simba, Scar was possibly attempting to preserve a portion of his humanity by not hurting the cub. What if he was just trying to hold off from the lengths he was willing to go to to obtain power over the kingdom? Maybe the act of killing Simba just seemed too wrong for him to accomplish. While I do think it's possible that Scar may have had an ego boost from defeating Mufasa and possibly could see the extent of his evil deeds if he were to act against Simba, I don't think Scar would be willing to let his throne fade away because he held back from doing what was necessary. Sure, when he became king, he allowed himself to take a more passive role in the Pride Lands, but during the climb, it felt like he was unstoppable. I think when Scar found Simba still alive in the gorge, I believe he knew that he had to approach Simba's death delicately after the lion survived the stampede. While I'm sure those other thoughts of morality or superiority may have went through his mind, I think it makes more sense that Scar didn't attack Simba himself because he was still crafting the perfect setup in order to become king. When he sees Simba alive, he has to process the situation quickly and make a decision on how to proceed. Maybe a part of him didn't want to have to be the one to dig his claws into Simba, but I think what was really stirring was how he could defeat him here without losing the fabricated story he had developed for his pride. To keep the lionesses and the subjects of the Pride Lands on his side, he had to fabricate a convincing story for the death of both Mufasa and Simba that would lead them to believe that he was not responsible. While Mufasa's cuts on his paws and Scar's scent could easily be explained away by Scar claiming to have attempted to pull Mufasa to safety before he fell, claw marks from a lion paired with Scar's smell on Simba could have given Scar away. Scar needed the kingdom to believe that he mourned the loss of Simba and Mufasa, so the subjects would be willing to accept him as their king. I think while approaching Simba in that gorge, Scar determined he had to restrain himself from taking Simba's life. To remain innocent in the eyes of the kingdom, he needed the hyenas to go after Simba and kill him at the edge of the Pride Lands. To do that, Scar enjoyed his manipulation and torture of Simba to force away the little hairball who stood in between him and the throne. Well, I was first in line until the little hairball was born. Scar approached Simba and began to speak to him. It seemed Scar didn't desire to creep up on Simba to attack the lion, but instead he decided to play it off that he didn't know what had happened. As Simba told his uncle the tale of Mufasa's demise, Scar twisted the events for Simba to make the cub place the guilt for his father's death onto himself. Scar was playing with Simba psychologically to force him into submission. No one ever means for these things to happen, but the king is dead. And if it weren't for you, he'd still be alive. Instead of destroying the only lion who opposed his rightful claim to the throne, Scar manipulated Simba to take sole responsibility for Mufasa's death. And once Simba internalized this truth, Scar told his nephew to not return with him to Pride Rock, but to run away. Run away, Simba. Run. Run away and never return. Similarly to how Mufasa's last moment was consumed by seeing his only brother take pleasure in murdering him, I think a part of Scar enjoyed watching the last lion who laid claim to the throne run away in shame. Simba didn't wrong Scar through many actions or words, but his presence in Scar's life was a barrier to what he desired, so ridding Simba from the Pride Lands was a moment that brought him pleasure. Pleased with himself as he had successfully made Simba feel so guilty, alone, and broken that he abandoned his life and he was now out of sight, it was time for the hyenas to end him. Kill him. Scar was no idiot on his rise to be king, and he knew that he was conducting the murkiest scam. He was a brilliant and meticulous plotter, schemer, and planner, so of course, when he confronted the issue of Simba's life, I think he would fully consider his options. Sure, murdering Simba could have been the quickest and easiest to verify method to get rid of him, but once he slowed his mind to the impulsive action before him and saw the danger from the possible outcomes, I believe he adjusted his strategy to ensure that his reign could finally begin undisputed. The hyenas had to kill Simba to solidify the end of Mufasa's reign without tarnishing the rise of Scar's. As long as neither Mufasa or Simba returned, Scar had ensured that he would not be forced to answer for their removal from the Pride Lands, which meant he could freely reign as king.
But now I'd love to hear your thoughts. Why do you think Scar didn't stop Simba himself? Let me know what you think in the comments, along with any other ideas you have for future videos. To see more Lion King videos like this one, you can find a link to those videos in the description. And if you'd like to continue to see more magical and less depressing discussions, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. Thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.